hello so today we will going to start cloud computing architecture as the second unit of our course work so in this part we will cover basically requirements of cloud computing what are the requirements introduction to some of the cloud architecture then what are the various kinds of cloud architecture possible then we'll discuss about three different type of cloud computing zones like SOA service oriented architecture, grid computing, cloud computing, then transactional and on demand and distributed computing. So we'll start with the requirements of cloud computing. So basically cloud computing has many requirements. Some of the famous requirements are like scalability, cost efficiency, legal agreement and business. Then why cloud computing is required? Why cloud computing is so important nowadays? Because requirement changes with time and there are various roles of different persons, different technology changes with time so that the changes required in IT and software architecture like what are the changes required? Some data storage distribution changes are required. High performance computation re changes are required. Transactional computing are required. Some caching of the efficient caching is required. Workflow management is required. Access control is required. Service level agreements changes are required then changing enterprise and industrial environment in the various roles of customer provider isv these all things are been changing and working out and there are two type of elasticity in architecture which are possible first one is vertical scale up second one is horizontal scale out Vertical scale up means keeping on adding some of the resources and increasing the computational power of of computers and process the job to a single computation with computational unit with high resources. So these are the various vertical scale up. Then horizontal scale out means you keep on adding discrete resources for computation and make them behave as it is in converged way means in the Hadoop programming or Spark programming various different computers are being attached through network and they work for single task and processes how it has been done it has been done with split job splitting of job multiple discrete machines are being combined together to produce single output then distributed databases are there so these are the various two ways first one is vertical scale up means you keep on adding resources to the single machine and pass the job to the single computational machine with higher resources second one is horizontal scale out means you keep on adding discrete resources through some networking and having middlewares in between so that the both the machines will work like a single machine and there are many machines thousands of machine isolated machine thousands of isolated machines are converged together with some middleware so that they behave like a single machine so thousands of machine will behave like a single machine then these isolations are being broken with the help of networking and how with the middleware so these two technologies are required for combining different machines together then splitting of job takes place in such multiple discrete machines so that the combined output could be produced then distributed uh, computing basically have have 
so the distributed database systems are there various type of distributed database systems are there then hpc have the second option is the better one because this horizontal scale out is better as compared to vertical scale up because you can't add many resources to the single disk device it's very difficult so it's computational complexity of the first one vertical scale up is very high and cost of adding resources to the same device is also very high so vertical scale out scale up is not at all good so we prefer horizontal scale out for the high performance computing and we'll discuss some of the cloud computing architectures so most fundamental cloud computing architecture uh, proposed by nist cloud computing reference architecture is like this there are basically this is there are five actors in the cloud computing and it's a high level architecture means it is abstract of all type of architecture possible in the uh, cloud computing so the five type of actors are like they have different roles they have different responsibilities they have different activities and they have different functions to work in cloud computing so this understanding requirement uses characteristics and standards according to these five architectures first one is cloud consumer second one is cloud provider third one is cloud broker then fourth one is cloud auditor and fifth one is cloud carrier we'll discuss all these five in detail in next few slides so we'll see this architecture this diagram so you can see cloud provider is in between so they are the one who supplies business support provisioning configuration and portability and interoperability they manages physical resource layers like hardware and different facilities cloud provider manages resource abstraction control the basic thing they do do is service orchestration how they do service orchestration with the help of infrastructure service platform as a service software as a service so three service layers are being orchestrated this is called service orchestration then cloud provider actually manages security and privacy cloud broker actually have the service intermediation service aggregation service arbitrage so all these three things happens so the cloud auditor security audit privacy impact audit and performance audit these are the three type of audits which are been possible for from the cloud auditor then the cloud consumer is basically have the fundamental for using such services by itself by cloud computing have different characteristics because they have various cloud services and these cloud services ha should have to follow some of the characteristics so what are the characteristics of cloud services first one is on demand self service means they have to perform according to the demand means number of users are increasing then the scalability should also increase then broad network access means the resources data link layer transport layer should work properly then resource pooling means how much ram is required how much hard disk is required how much capacity of storage and what are the computational power of cpus are required so all these are resource pooling then rapid elasticity means if there are suddenly increase of number of user for a particular second or minute then the cloud should able to capacity to manage those sudden increment of the users then measured services so how you can measure some of the service how you can deal with uh, maximum amount of service 
then actor in cloud computing so these are the five actors that we discussed from initial stage cloud consumer cloud provider cloud auditor cloud broker cloud carrier so how, what are their definitions so some of the organization or person that actually maintain some relation business relationship with its users through some services are actually been said as cloud consumer because they use some of the business application and services so which are being provided by cloud provider then some of the persons organization or entity which are responsible for making a service available to the interested party means uh, to the cloud consumer what does it mean by interested party it means cloud consumer so there are various type of entities and organization which behaves like consumer and which behaves like provider who are the famous cloud provider like google facebook amazon these are the famous cloud provider who are the consumers we all common users are the consumers then what are the cloud auditors what is the role of the cloud auditors some of the party that conduct the independent assessment of cloud services means they manages cloud services they calculate the behavior of information security operations some of the performance and security for the implementation and management of cloud then cloud what are the cloud broker cloud broker are entity that manages and uses some and have some performance and delivery of cloud services they actually cloud broker actually negotiate with the relationship of cloud provider and cloud consumer means cloud provider will stay in between cloud consumer and cloud provider what are the role of cloud carrier so cloud carrier has intermediate role of providing connectivity transportation of cloud services from cloud provider to the cloud consumer what are the scenarios in cloud computing so first scenario is like there are various type of cloud providers so the cloud broker will actually merge those services of different cloud provider and provide the merged mashup service so the new mashup service is being provided by the cloud bro broker to the cloud consumer so the cloud consumer will interact with the cloud broker instead of directly to different cloud providers so cloud consumer is interacting with cloud broker and cloud broker is behaving like a cloud provider so the cloud provider will give service to the cloud broker and cloud broker will give service to the cloud consumer so what does cloud broker do in this middle one so the cloud consumer cloud broker so the cloud broker will create a new mashup service combining different services of different providers so that a new kind of service will be created then cloud provider are basically invisible to the cloud consumer means the broker is only visible party for the cloud consumer then scenario 2 so what are the scenarios next scenario possible so the cloud carrier is actually provide some of the connectivity transportation and services to the cloud provider and to the cloud consumer but the cloud provider participates in the arrangement of two unique service level agreements one with the cloud provider one with the cloud carrier and one with the cloud consumer so 
there are two different service level agreement which are being done by the cloud provider what are the two different service level agreement done by the cloud provider first service level agreement is with cloud consumer second service level agreement is done with the cloud carrier in this cloud provider is actually in middle of of the cloud consumer and pro carrier through the service level agreement so the cloud provider may request some cloud carrier to provide dedicated and encrypted connections to ensure the cloud service so this is been mentioned in the service level agreement so what is the scenario 3 scenario 3 is like cloud auditor is auditing conducting independent assessment for the operations and security of cloud services the audit may involve some of the interaction with the with both cloud consumer and cloud provider so the cloud auditor basically conducts the auditing for so the cloud consumer is basically audited by cloud auditor cloud provider is also been audited by the cloud auditor so cloud auditor has independent right to perform assessment of both operational security and services and that cloud auditor will behave in between cloud consumer and provider So the next will be cloud consumer so software as a service consumer platform as a service consumer infrastructure as a service consumer then cloud provider so we'll discuss all these things in later part of the class